Okay, hello. So in my first video, my first raw therapy video, I was like drunk and I talked for like an hour. And then in the second one, the audio was terrible and I have a high tech solution. I moved the mic a little bit farther away. I'm just using, using like a crappy webcam to record this audio. That's all I got now. Uh, anyway. Last time I showed you the new uh, capture sharpening tool that is coming to RAW Therapy, I've disabled it because in this video I'm going to show you the noise reductions. So if you didn't watch my sharpening video, uh, because I don't just talk about the new capture sharpening tool, I go through all the sharpening methods in RAW Therapy, so you should probably watch that. This is the same picture I used and uh, I'm going to enable the unsharp mask that we set in my sharpening video and now let's talk about noise reduction so noise reduction in raw therapy now before I came to raw therapy my technique for noise reduction in you know I would use Lightroom and I would uh, often use fairly weak noise reduction and end up leaving a small amount of noise in the picture uh, just because I didn't want to use too heavy noise reduction, right? Like if you use enough to get rid of all the noise, uh, you blur away some detail, you might end up with noise reduction artifacts. So I would usually be pretty light-handed on the noise reduction. Uh, this leaving a little bit of noise also helps to make the picture look sharper even if it isn't and adding grain can do the same thing if you add a little bit of grain to your picture it can sometimes make it look a bit sharper than making it completely smooth and that's one feature that raw therapy doesn't have that lightroom did is they don't have a, a way to add grain i wish they would uh, i understand that might not be on the agenda for them but i would love it if i could add a bit of grain in it uh anyway there's other ways to do it i do it in GIMP and you can do it in Darktable. The grain tool in Darktable is really cool, but I want it in this. Uh, now, with my old approach to noise reduction though, uh, transferring it to raw therapy, I found it did not work quite as well. Like, uh, using a pretty low amount of noise reduction, trying to leave a little bit of noise in the picture, the noise that remained was not as natural, or should I say, not as film-like looking as it would be with Lightroom, and the artifacts might be a little bit worse. Now, still all things considered, this wasn't a deal breaker. I still found the image quality overall from raw therapy so much better than Lightroom that I switched completely. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't all that bad, but I was not entirely happy with the noise reduction and, uh, hoping it would improve, but I've realized that, uh, I was doing it wrong because <laughs> I was using my Lightroom technique in a completely different software. So, uh, let me show you how that works. So in Rawpedia, they... You should read the Rawpedia method of noise reduction. First they have a, I always turn on over in the raw tab, I always turn on the hot pixel filter and look, you can see a hot pixel right there. My camera has hot pixels from time to time. So I turn on the hot pixel filter so I don't have to worry about them when I'm doing noise reduction. And there's impulse noise reduction, uh, I turn that on if I see like salt and pepper kind of noise. I don't know if you can see a hot pixel right here, but that's actually on my screen. It shouldn't show up in the video, but uh, don't worry, it's not in the picture. Uh, anyway, I usually don't turn on impulse noise reduction on, unless I see the kind of salt and pepper looking noise in my picture. Now this picture isn't that noisy, but there is a little bit of noise there. Now if we enable noise reduction, what it will do by default is it will do color noise reduction, but not luminance. And it, it did get rid of some of the color noise. There's still a little tiny bit of luminance noise left. And let me show you here. The chrominance has gone to automatic. You can also set it to manual. And there's a curve for chrominance. So you can take the noise reduction out 
of the more colorful and brighter areas and have more noise reduction in the darks, you know? Uh, I usually don't play with that, but that is something worth playing with. Especially if you have a lot of noise, this picture is not so bad. Now in the luminance, that's not on by default. You can do like what I would do in Lightroom, which is use a fairly low amount until I start to see noise go away, but not all of it. And then do a little bit of de detail recovery, maybe up to the, around the amount that I use for noise reduction even. And then click it on and off and see. Now it see it's getting rid of quite a bit of noise, but it is not having a very deleterious effect on the details over here. And it's getting rid of noise right here. So it's doing pretty good. Not bad. But I have found it's doing really well on this picture. It's hard for me to show what I was talking about because I have found that in some pictures it can be just not as smooth and nice as Lightroom. Right? Anyway, it's also worth looking here. Uh, you can change the color space between lab and RGB. And that might actually... Uh, Oh, it says for raw images, use the lab method. For non-raw, oh, for non-raw images, you can only use the lab method. But for raw images, you can use lab or RGB. And I've heard them talking in the forums like, uh, I can't remember which one. I think it's lab. It does a little bit better with color, reducing the noise without destroying your fine colors. And also, you, the, for the luminance here, we've set the sliders, but if we didn't want to do that, we could use a curve instead for luminance, and we could do luminance noise reduction on the shadows, but not on the highlights, and set, or just a little bit on the highlights, and set how much of a threshold between shadows and highlights. This is lagging a bit, because I'm recording, and I'm in Windows. <laughs> does a lot better for me on Linux because it's not trying to run spyware in the background all the time. Anyway, gee, I find it better with the uh, curve. Actually, I was able to pretty accidentally achieve a better result with the curve than I did with the slider. So you can play around with the curve or the slider. Oh yeah, the curve is looking better. Yeah. But anyway, playing around with all of this on a lot of pictures, I still never found that I was getting as good noise reduction as satisfying or as nice to look at to me as I did in Lightroom. But now I have a better method. Oh, before I show you my better method, uh, also, after having done your noise reduction with the sliders or curves, you can also turn on a median filter, and this will uh, smoothen the picture a bit. If you look here, the effect can be pretty subtle, but I'll turn it on. Wait for it to catch. Okay, turn it on. And you can see it smoothed the noise. There is now, like, no noise. But it also smoothed this detail area here a bit. But they say on Rawpedia, and I think they're right, that while this does smoothen it a bit, it doesn't get rid of any detail. It just appears sharper with the median filter off. So for me, I will take appears sharper. But if you want to get technical about it, you can turn the median filter on and have basically no noise and uh, you know, you don't lose any detail. You might lose some apparent sharpness, but no real detail. And of course, you have to try this in a print, which I haven't, but you would have to try these in a print before you could pass judgment on which is better. I leave the medium filter off in most pictures, but I'm growing more inclined to turn it on. Anyway, my new method, 
turn it back to sliders, okay? I will zero out the luminance sliders. And instead of doing what we just did, I'm going to turn luminance to 100%. Whoa, crazy. And look, it is going to be, see, it really smooths things. But don't panic. Now we're going to drag up detail recovery until things look. I'll try there, 66. Mm -hmm. You can drag it up quite high. Yeah. So that hasn't gotten any less sharp with the noise reduction. Turn the noise reduction off. Turn noise reduction on. It's great. And let's go to the noisy shadowy area. Turn noise reduction off. Turn noise reduction on. It has killed the noise. It has completely killed it. So we've got noise reduction, luminance noise reduction set to 100%, killing all noise. But we've brought back the detail slider, brings it all back. Now, Rawpedia doesn't tell you this. This is something I learned reading a... Oh, look, here's the website. Discuss.pixels.us. I'll link to this below. Uh... This is where you have to go, besides uh, you have to read Rawpedia anyway first, but then you go here for your cutting edge information about raw therapy, and I'm just reading stuff there and repeating it to you, but you can go there yourself and beat me to it, right? I'm going to turn detail recovery up a little bit more. Anyway, this is cool. This is a way that you can uh, completely eliminate all noise from your picture while preserving detail basically perfectly and it's even better than what Rawpedia tells you what to do and the result is better than Lightroom there's no noise and there's no loss of detail whatsoever now if only I could add grain in here without having to take it into another software but you know image quality image quality image quality that's the most important thing and that's why this is the best raw converter it is way better than Lightroom and it's better than anything else I've tried and you should get it too I mean you would go out and pay money for a lens or a camera or something that makes your pictures better this makes your pictures better and it is free all you need to do is read a bunch of stuff and do a bunch of work but I will help you. I'm sharing what I learn about it here because I need more people to know. I want more people using this. I want more people involved. And I want people to know that this is the best raw converter out there. And this is the way to do noise reduction in it. Cheers.